Yo, Joburg everyone, my name is Steve, you're watching G.I. Joburg, and this is Leonard the Core Sky Strike Aerial Combat Jet. I've been on the fence about adding one of these to my collection for the longest time. First became acquainted with them online in 2019, I've been kind of on the fence about adding a core plane to the ranks of my G.I. Joe aircraft, until a good buddy, new pal, drinking buddy based here in Brisbane, Michael, put this in my hand and said, Steve, I've got an extra, enjoy my brother. Taking a look at the box details, the first thing that jumps out to me anyway, is the fact that they decided to complete that piece by adding a little faux piece of fuselage, complete with rivets and everything. Instead of just leaving it open, they decided to go the extra mile, which is interesting for a an off-brand or kind of generic toy line. More often than not, you're gonna find those details left bare. But this seems to be a more high quality presentation than we're accustomed to even from G.I. Joe's chief competitor, the core. The sticker work is amazing, very attractive. It's got the try me feature over here. Press that and you'll get the light up feature to be able to demonstrate in store. The figure is obviously prominently displayed, his accessories alongside, and even an included comic book. They tout that it has an 18 inch giant size wingspan with folding landing gear. And already you're starting to say to yourself, well, hell, this looks like a far more impressive toy than the core usually put out. The first thing that jumps out to you is that it has a transparent canopy. Now this is something that not even all G.I. Joe vehicles had. I'm thinking the Skyhawk, I'm thinking the Mud Fighter, even larger scale jets. It tells that it has a two figure cockpit, forward and reverse. I'm not entirely sure I want someone looking backwards. It's not like he has a tail gun to operate or anything, but it's nice to be able to have an additional figure on board. There is a later iteration of this with a slightly different colorway. It's got blue wings with a yellow and uh, blue nose. Um, that is called the Sky Knight, and for whatever reason they decided to do away with the plastic. I guess they're trying to go a little lighter on the plastic, but unfortunately it means that people could tamper with the canopy. And so I've seen several of those Sky Knights with that canopy cracked. Off. Of course, that's not a problem here. We see we've got a fully encased toy. No way I'm gonna get my grubby little mitts on this without cutting it open. So let's do exactly that. Three pieces of tape later and the flap is ready to free. I will note that the box has a lovely kind of almost laminate quality to it. It's got a sheen. Very, very nice. Feels great, smooth, but hey, we're not collecting boxes, are we? We're collecting toys. Ah, oh, yes, I can touch you. <laughs> Love the metallic plastic. It has that swirl to it, which gives it like a, a lovely pearlescence in the lights. Mm, mm, mm. Very evocative of this era of aviation history. When it get into the exact elements that it's borrowing from and why it feels and looks so familiar, but I think we're gonna first free everything. Right, so after a fair bit of cutting tape, cutting elastics, undoing twist ties, we have the Sky Strike liberated from its box. And there's quite a lot to get into over here. We'll start with the figure. He is a new-ish uh, core figure in that he does not have a T crotch. So ball joints in there, very juicy waist ball. In fact, it feels like it might actually come apart, but no, he's still there. Oh, still got some elastic uh, remaining that I had missed. Man, there's a lot of that stuff. He can holster his weapons, which is impressive. This uh, Shamar does not come off, so he's kind of mystery man. But the head sculpt, it ain't bad. He has a suppressed sidearm, very nice. I'm gonna imagine that goes in this holster over here. Snug. <laughs> yeah, getting it under that loop is gonna prove tricky. Don't wanna force it. Maybe that's not the one it's supposed to go into. He comes with this, I'm gonna call it a magazine. Maybe that is what goes in there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, core fans. So yes, that'll leave the other holster. And he's a righty, so let's put it in the right holster. Deep. Lovely. He then comes with this very cool rifle. It does have a back plug, but unfortunately 
his screw is too shallow for it to, to go into, but that's okay. Perhaps he wasn't the intended user, but it's a very handsome weapon with a bullpup design. We like that. Holds it well. Looking badass. Jeez. Not a bad figure at all. Feels very durable. Makes up for the perhaps lack of paint applications by using different plastic material colors. So he's got a lot of visual intrigue going on there, even if he doesn't have too much paint. Bringing in the classic O-ring, they scale all right. Not too shabby. Um, he probably would stand better toe to toe with a modern four inch G.I. Joe figure, yeah. Those guys look like they could play in the same universe. It comes with an eight page mini comic. I think the artwork is phenomenal. Very action packed stuff. Gives you some insight into the play pattern that we're supposed to use. Because of all these anachronistic designs, it's because the core are flipping through time, trying to stop the curse. So they've got all these various weapons pulled from different eras, and they've kind of jury-rigged them with modern jet engines and swept back wings. It takes place in space, it takes place on the high seas. It's very exciting stuff. A very nice inclusion and lovely to see a bit of storytelling in what would have otherwise been a pretty anonymous toy. But getting to the main prize, this is what I've been wanting to talk about. The design cues, if you are into aviation, are there. And even if you're not, you can't deny that this has a very familiar feel. The empennage and the canopy are plucked straight from the P-51. But this takes a few steps into the near future by adding the P-51 had an intake back there, sure, but it has an intake over here and twin jet engines towards the rear. I guess with all that air, these bad boys must be pretty hungry. The rear kind of evokes the F-4 Phantom in that regard by having those two very closely spaced jet engines. And then the fact that it's done up in that silver just make it very P-51-esque, but also very much like the early, early jet engine aircraft of the 1950s. No sticker de detail applied to the back just yet. We'll get into that. But yeah, I just wanted to make some notes on, on the fuselage before we attach the wings. If we use the wings swept backwards, jet engine. If we use them swept forwards, now it's starting to look even more like a P-51. The sticker detail is not only impressive for the core, but impressive for pretty much any 118 toy, even model kits. This microprint says FX-13 Super Kestrel. Use only Mega-50 jet fuel only. Fuel capacity is 647 US gallons. Ammo is 90mm high speed rounds. Do not reload guns when hot. Man, this thing can take a lot of fuel. And a 90mm cannon would find a more appropriate home on a battle tank. But Captain Zev Wolfman Ethan is one hell of a pilot. Look at those kill marks. Canopy opens. Oh, that's a very satisfying snap. It sort of holds in position. It springs into place and then holds there. Lovely. And yes, it has got... <laughs> It has got a joystick. Not only that, but the joystick has a little bit of articulation to it. Beautifully detailed cockpit sticker and loads of sculpting. Just busying up the cockpit. Looks like uh, this guy's got some latches. I suppose to, to roll back his section of the canopy if it was a two-piece part. Oh yeah. Padded seats, perhaps a little bit too wide for my liking. I would have liked a more bucket approach, but at least this way, you'll be able to fit a wide variety of figures in there, no problem. The sticker sheet also seems very high quality with these distressed markings, but it's still cut to be straight and apply very nicely, smooth, not paper, and the printing is sharp. Once again, Leonard, you are impressing me with this presentation. And speaking of presentation, even some of the box elements are like dial pieces. If you can uh, snip them carefully enough, you can preserve these and use them within your own dioramas. 
lovely additional effort. They didn't have to go the extra mile, but I'm glad they did because this is stuff that I really dig. We just don't see it often enough. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very satisfying snaps. Seems like a one-time fit and it is super stable. Very sturdy. No wiggle room to that. Lovely, lovely. And now we can observe what also pushes us into a more premium category. The fact that it has not only functional landing gear that can be deployed, but also rotating tires. There are a few GI Joe vehicles that cheaped out and didn't have wheels that could move. This thing's even got a deployable tail wheel. But I must admit, it is rather strange seeing a tail dragger for a jet engine. But I suppose by raising the intakes, maybe you know, you're less likely to have bits of debris, rocks, dirt getting sucked in there. So it's got its place. And also, this is very much a jury rigged or um, improvised aircraft. It's like they took the P-51 frame and just shoved jet engines into it. Bringing in our figure, I've learned this guy's name is Smoke. Cool code name. Let's pop him into the pilot's seat. Oh, once again, so lovely having that thing flip up. Yeah, as I say, the, the cockpit has to be kind of generously spaced because these guys, they can't really bring their legs too close together. But it shouldn't matter because, yeah, he's in very easily. Securely, too easily in fact. Let's bring in a regular old Joe to be his observer. Flip that down, close the latch. Looking good guys. I wonder what the function of the backseat man is. I suppose he's uh, navigations, maybe he operates the radio, because this thing doesn't come with any bombs or rockets. It is two cannon in the nose and then six machine guns in the wings. So that is a um, P-51 armament plus what I suppose would be uh, like a German uh, Focke Wolf or ME-109 armament or even the ME-262, the jet uh, aircraft. Nice heavy guns in the nose, pack some punch, take out some bombers perhaps. What would this thing's function be? I guess it is a high-speed prototype if you want to use it in a World War II setting or, as intended, it is plucked from that era and then quickly updated to bring the fight to the curse through uh, various eras of aviation. Uh, as I say, it is not equipped for jet combat with frontline modern fighters, so it's Ah, it's purely there for science fiction fun, suspension of disbelief stuff, and an opportunity to play with a very fun, unique airframe that would otherwise not work in a G.I. Joe setting. This thing can do strafing runs, it can uh, certainly show up the competition over the skies of Germany back in 1944. Very, very cool. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Loving it. Should we take it for a little spin? do it. The stickers are very robust and the adhesive is forgiving which is good if you're like me and take multiple attempts at getting these things lined up. What's more they are perfectly sized and cut for their areas, vibrantly printed and even distressed in places to add a layer of lived-in realism. Pressing them in ever so slightly will bring out the underlying scribe lines but the cherry on top has got to be the fact that these are not glossy, but rather have a rougher texture which gives them a matte finish. The result is similar to a water slide decal where the sticker surface almost disappears into the plastic. It's excellent! And really a masterclass in how stickers should be done. I hope the other toy vehicle makers take notes. The designs are also superlative and really bring a strong dose of realism to the plane. Like these broken outlines, they once again perfectly fit the area they're assigned to, will fool your eye by not adding a gloss layer to the surface, and bring in a fineness of detail that you would expect from a professional model kit 
not a child's action toy. Final thoughts on this set? Unbelievable what Lenard has pulled off here. It has very few hallmarks of a budget toy, if any. It feels good in hand, has exceptional design and detail with a functioning landing gear and a transparent cockpit canopy, comes with a figure and three accessories, an attractive box and mini comic, even has the take it or leave it lights and pulsating guns. It pulls from the real world and gives it a fantastical twist. I just realized that the nose section is taken from the F-86D, which also lends its swept wings to the design of Sky Strike. Or FX-13 Super Kestrel. I think I'm gonna go with that designation rather. I wouldn't want to confuse it with a bloated, overpriced set that weighs too much to fly one-handed and couldn't land on its own gear to save itself. Ooh, shots fired. Thanks once again to my new friend Michael for this superb toy. I would say Yo Joburg at this point, but I think it would be more fitting to say Go Core. Cool.